In the 21st century, the world is experiencing difficult times. No matter how one chooses to look at things or how much of a positive attitude one tries to adopt, there is still a great deal of uncertainty amongst most people in regards to the future, and many of those who have taken the time to investigate and who are aware of such things see the situation as hopeless, and many feel powerless in the face of the new world order leviathan that is ever more quickly engulfing our civilization. Yet the reality is that people are not powerless at all. In fact, quite the opposite is true, for there is a very simple and effective way to stop the new world order in its tracks. Let's be honest about it. The system that we live under is corrupt. It's rotten to the core. It's about self-service and it's run by psychopaths and criminals. And everyone knows it. And they get away with it. And the world continues along in this dysfunctional manner simply because we let it continue. So stop going along with it. Understand that the way to bring about real change in the world is through non-compliance to the system. And many ask, what is non-compliance? Does this mean I should quit my job and burn all my money? And the answer to any questions such as these is no, of course not. Non-compliance is about doing the right thing. It's about disconnecting yourself from the system, being responsible for your thoughts, your actions and your intentions, and it lies very much in realizing your own potential. Do what is right in all that you do. Realize your connection to others and think humanitarianly rather than economically. Don't base your life on the collection of useless trinkets or on social status. Do what is right in your heart. And doing what is right, understanding whether what you are doing is the right thing or not, is not something you have to decide. It's something that you already know in your heart if you would just look and be honest with yourself. If you are doing something that you need to justify to yourself with inner dialogue, then chances are that you are doing the wrong thing and are simply trying to talk yourself into allowing it. You know this. Knowledge of it is within your heart. You just have to look and you will find it. Understand how the energy works. Be aware of the energy you are drawing into yourself, of what you are manifesting with that energy, and what type of energy you are contributing back to the energy supply for others to draw upon. This is truly how it works. Realize your potential as a human being. Forget the imaginary restraints that have been placed before you by the academic system and the limitations you are told exist by science and religious teachings. And look at the whole spectrum. Because the fact is that each of these institutions functions only to compartmentalize knowledge. Each exists for the very purpose of limiting the scope of your understanding by locking you into a contained and restrictive paradigm. And until people begin to look beyond such imposed limitations, open their minds and make the connections between religion and science, they are never going to make the connections to themselves, to this reality, and to the Creator that men have called God. But to do this, and to gain a real understanding, requires both acceptance and self-responsibility. It requires that people act in a proactive manner. There are many who find such things difficult, those who would prefer someone else to come and save them. Yet such people desire the impossible, for they desire to be delivered into salvation and utopia without ever understanding the true nature of their world or even themselves. And this is very often due to the limitations of an imposed belief system. Now you can talk to those who embrace religion. You can sit them down and you can talk to them about God and about Satan and they will converse with you eagerly and they all very much believe in such things. But as soon as you put things like science, galactic laws, numerology or astrotheology into the equation, many just shut off. They say it's God's will and they sit back and they wait for Armageddon. And some will even go so far as to say the pursuit of such higher understandings is demonic. And though on a different level, it's the same with many scientists. They understand the mechanics of it all, but many refuse to add spirituality into the picture and only adhere to laws that can be applied on a mechanical level. 
both approaches are inherently flawed because neither will consider the arguments of the other and both refuse to take into account, allow for and even embrace the true nature of feelings and emotions. Yet feeling and emotion is the key to it all. Feeling and emotion is the language that is used to create and to mold reality. Feeling and emotion is the true nature of prayer and it is also the language by which man may communicate with the Creator. What is the true nature of that divine entity that man has named God? The Creator is the intelligence that underlies all, the fabric that permeates all realities. The Creator exists as one, a single consciousness that is in essence a duality, both male and female, the Alpha and the Omega. This is why in every religious text in which the Creator speaks, it is in the plural. This is the nature of the Divine Matrix, connects all things, the consciousness of which we are all expressions. As self-awareness grows and realization of one's connection to this consciousness awakens within each person, institutionalized religions seek to externalize this force and suggest that God is something external from man, a benefactor that is looking down on us. Many so-called New Age religions attempt to internalize it and suggest that God is yourself, that God lies within. But both of these understandings are erroneous. Every being in creation, both you and I and every other person in this reality, is an eternal living soul expression of God, of the consciousness of the Alpha and Omega, just as every soul is male female in nature. Yet despite this, our world, our species and our consciousness is today rampant with division and distrust that is wholly illusionary and has been deliberately engineered into being. The manufactured creation of an institutionalized society. This has been going on for a very long time and it has reached extreme proportions over the last century. During this time, man as a species has been shifted so far from his center and so far away from true reality that we have almost completely lost our humanity. We have been trained to be totally dependent upon the system. We have been robbed of our will, of our self-esteem and our independence. We have been trained to believe whatever the TV tells us and to think that image, social status and the collecting of meaningless trinkets is the meaning of life. But most importantly, through television, the mass media and through the ingestion of brain inhibiting toxins such as fluoride, we have been robbed of our power to think critically and objectively. And most dangerously of all, through these same machinations, we have been robbed of our life skills. This last fact alone has placed mankind in the most vulnerable position of our entire recorded history. For at this point in time, we are, almost each and every one of us, completely dependent upon a corrupt corporate apparatus for our survival. An apparatus that places profits before people. It has nothing at all to do with the true nature of man, of our place upon and relationship to this earth or to each other. Yet we depend upon it for our food, for our housing, for our information and even for our entertainment. It tells us what to do, where to go, what to look like, what to eat, how to dress, how to act and what to think about the world and about each other. And we obey it while the world around us is raped. And if this corporate apparatus were suddenly to fail or shut down, every supermarket shelf in the world would be almost completely empty and every resource we take for granted as being on hand for our daily lives would be depleted in a matter of just three days. And what then? Because if a person from almost any level of modern society was suddenly to be left alone to fend for themselves, there are very few who would be able to survive. It is of the utmost importance that mankind wake up to the reality of this and to the true situation the world is facing. Because the future we are allowing to be created, and to which we are also allowing ourselves to literally become completely enslaved to and totally dependent upon, is not going to be a future worth living in. 
What is required to fix it is for people to re-establish themselves as human beings and get back in touch with their humanity. Take control of your own life. Start growing your own food and take responsibility for yourself and realize and accept your connection to others. 120 years ago, a situation such as the one we are now in would have been unthinkable. So why then is it so prevalent today? It's because it has been done by design. The reason is that we are being set up. And I don't tell people this in order to scare them. I tell people simply because it is important they become aware of it, as it is a situation that can still be rectified once people become aware of the truth. Now there are many who choose to blame different groups for this. They claim Zionism is to blame, or it's the Bilderberg group, or it's the international banksters and the money system that's the root of the problem. Yet the truth is that all of these things are merely differing mechanisms of control that are all interconnected. Certainly the money system is the head of the snake that's used to control it all, including the people. But ultimately, it's all one system, and all of these mechanisms are merely different layers of the same onion. They are differing levels in the hierarchy, and different arms of the same octopus. Both Zionism and the money system, and any other visibly secret organizations, are merely playing their own specific part. This conspiracy runs very deep. It goes back to ancient Egypt and even beyond. Step back and just look at the bigger picture. As I've repeatedly said in other films, there is a ruling bloodline that exists on this earth. It is very old and it has always ruled the earth. It is to this bloodline that the Bavarian Illuminati appears to have allied itself with some 230 years ago. This ruling class is known by many as a sun cult and there is good reason for this as it still carries out its ritualistic worship of Amun Ra in the world today. It does this in full view and has even hijacked other faiths to do it. Unbeknownst to the members of these religions, one purpose in doing this is to use these people to help channel the energy required to control this reality. There have been a great many people involved in this bloodline, both genetically and ideologically. And it is the upper echelons of this ancient sun cult who ultimately sit at the top and steer the ship of state. If the truth be known, there is already one world government in control of this planet. It's just that it's hidden in the shadows and governs the world through covert methods. The three most prominent of which are by controlling the flow of the world's resources, its manipulation of the global money supply, and most importantly, through the control over the flow of information. Now, archaeological evidence clearly shows us that there have indeed been civilizations as advanced as our own, and perhaps even in possession of technology that we are still yet to realize, that once existed on this planet in times long past. Archaeological evidence also clearly shows us that many thousands of years ago, the Earth suffered some kind of catastrophe. In fact, there have been several. The last one that was recorded in any discernible way was the deluge described in the Bible as the flood of Noah. The deluge did take place. It's recounted in many, many cultures, some going back even further than the Bible. It exists in Babylonian texts in the Epic of Gilgamesh. It even exists in the legends of Native Americans, of South American cultures, and even in the legends of the Australian Aboriginal, and in many other places besides. And this is not by coincidence. The deluge did in fact occur. The time of the deluge, or possibly even in the catastrophe preceding the last one, there was indeed an advanced civilization that existed on this earth, and during one such catastrophe, technology was lost. Not just civilization, but actual hardware and important scientific records. It has been a painstaking process for those in control to regain this technology, and we have been allowed to breed in order that it may be recovered, and the control over Earth's resources is again secured by those who control this world. They have used us as the power to achieve these ends. Those who belong to this ancient cult are the keepers of the hidden knowledge, and these people understand that if you can control the emotions and belief of enough of the populations, you can control the entire species and quite literally create whatever reality you desire, and they have used our energy to create the world we now inhabit. The key to addressing this situation is to understand your own potential 
and understand the true nature of energy, vibration and of frequency. Everything that exists in this reality consists wholly of differing frequencies of energy. The expression of every frequency that exists exists as every son and daughter and every son and daughter that exists in creation is consciousness. The Creator is consciousness and every soul in projection in this reality is an expression of that consciousness. Consciousness through creation is universally the same and is pure Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness is the key. Once you get the picture that Christ consciousness rather than the doctrines of institutionalized religions is what it's all about, you understand everything about what's going on. Creation exists solely through the loving responsibility and intent of every soul in projection, every expression of the consciousness of the Creator. And this has nothing to do with institutionalized religion. Institutionalized religion has been devised by man to hide you from the truth and from the Christ consciousness that lies within you. Your inner thoughts and emotions literally affect the outer physical world around you. It is extremely important for people to understand that your feelings and the effect they have on the world around you are not something you can switch off and on at will. It's an ongoing thing that's happening all the time. Every conscious moment of your life, you are communicating with the energy field around you. And every moment, you are quite literally shaping this physical reality with your thoughts and your emotions and the energy you are releasing through them. Many people find such information to be somewhat discomforting because with the understanding that your inner thoughts and emotions literally affect the outer physical world around you comes a great responsibility. How will you accept this responsibility? How will you now choose to live your life in the realization and true understanding of what energies you are putting back into the matrix for others to draw upon? And of how these energies created by the choices you make are literally shaping the physical world around you. Jesus was a Christ conscious triune being in a projection. You are a Christ conscious triune being in a projection. A thought in the mind of God. A manifestation of the expression of Alpha and Omega. The difference is that Jesus knew it, while most other people haven't figured it out yet. Every person living within this three-dimensional reality lives a completely illusionary existence. What man considers the ordinary events of everyday life on Earth have no counterparts in the higher realms of awareness. Every person dwelling on the earth today is a living Christ triune being subject to the third dimensional mentalized illusion of this material plane. On earth each of you has five lower outer senses and 105 higher or inner senses you cannot normally access. Because of this you are only able to perceive a very narrow bandwidth of this reality. And the way to unlock these higher senses is to understand the one law that governs this reality. There is only one law, and that is the law of absolute and unconditional love and service to the creation for the Creator. Evil is doing in practice the opposite of what you should be doing in principle. The reason is simple. Disharmony is the result. What is thought of as evil is, quite simply, the presence of disharmony through acting in opposition to the One Law. Evil is a choice and the so-called Battle of Armageddon that those of a religious persuasion are waiting for is, in actual fact, already being waged. It is a battle of energy that is being fought in a higher realm. It is a battle that has been fought on all levels, both spiritually and physically and even electromagnetically. The weapons that are being used to wage this war are all around you. They are food toxins, electromagnetic radiation and television. 
It is a battle of consciousness. It is being waged by occult means and it is going on right now. The outcome of this war will be that man will either awaken his DNA, realize his true potential and change this reality into one that embraces his connection to everyone and everything and to the Creator, or he will succumb, and in doing so, he will lose the final vestige of his humanity. We are right now on the precipice. We are teetering on the brink of one of these two realities. On one side lies salvation, and on the other, oblivion, while in our hands lies the choice. Look around you. This battle has been raging for many, many years. People are just kept distracted by design, so for the most part, they haven't yet noticed. Free yourself of the distraction, though, and it becomes very obvious and quite plain to see. We are not in the end days or even in the end hours. We are in the final minutes and the choice of what the final outcome would be, the very key to winning, lies within each of you. All I can ask is that you each look within yourself, because when you look deep enough, you will find that the words I have spoken are true. Realize your inner power and embrace your true potential because the truth will set you free. My friends, stop complying with this system. It's time to wake up. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Everything is energy. What you perceive with your five senses to be the solid world around you is actually nothing of the sort. It is simply differing frequencies of energy acting in harmony to form what our senses perceive as matter. The reality that we are experiencing every day and all matter within it is in fact a symphony. A symphony consisting in its entirety of light and of sound. Ultimately, there is nothing else. There is only these differing vibrational frequencies of light and sound. This was expressed more than eloquently in the book The Four Agreements, in which the author Don Miguel Rees wrote that it is not the stars that create the light, but rather the light that creates the stars. The universe in which we live is exceedingly vast. It is fractal in nature. And this is more significant than you may at first comprehend, because recent advances in science indicate to us that this entire universe actually exists within the center of a black hole. And reality exists as above and so below. Have you ever truly looked within yourself? Does it seem significant to you that each of the 100 trillion atoms that make up each of the 53 trillion cells that in turn make up the human body is itself structured as a solar system? Each one of these atoms consists of 99.999% empty space. And yet it is these empty atoms that make up the seemingly solid world both around you and within you. Each world a realm of infinite possibility and of infinite energy. And yet one is contained within the finite space of your body. As above and so below.
at the heart of each atom, as at the heart of each cell, and at the heart of every living being, lies an energy so powerful and so mysterious that it had until recently remained elusive and undefined to modern science. What is contained within this energy is consciousness, and the form that it takes is that of a black hole. This is extremely significant, because what this understanding suggests to us is that within each atom of your body there also lies yet another seemingly endless universe, and that the universe in which we live also exists within the nucleus of an atom. To truly grasp the concept and the significance of this, one needs only to realize that all that actually exists within creation is consciousness. Consciousness composed of nothing more than pure energy. Everything is energy, and everything is consciousness, because the energy itself is conscious. Each soul in projection within this reality is simply one frequency of this consciousness, and one expression of that frequency, and as above, so below. And so it continues to infinity. This information is not new. It has been known for eons and it has been used throughout man's history. It was known and used over 10,000 years ago during the construction of the pyramids and of other ancient megalithic monuments. And it was known long before that time as well. Since that time, humanity has suffered a great forgetting. But even though this forgetting occurred, it has now become inarguably clear that mankind has been around for an extremely long time, long before any conceivable date for the planting of the first crop or the beginning of our current civilization. In fact, it is beyond any doubt whatsoever that in truth, humanity is tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands, and possibly even millions of years old. To many people, it may be somewhat staggering to come to the realization that man lived perfectly well on this planet for such long periods of years prior to what is taught and what is believed by our culture. Yet evidence clearly suggests that such is indeed the case. Such evidence indicates to us that the real truth is that the entire course of human history is unthinkably different from what we find suggested to us and often presented to us as fact in our modern libraries and our history books. And it is largely due to the suppression of truth regarding such matters that we find ourselves today living within societies that are fractured and in all ways dysfunctional. Societies that are in fact wholly illusionary. With any real investigation, we can find in truth everything taught to us by our education and our religious systems is wrong. And this is most especially true when taken in regard to our significance as individuals. Through such institutions, we are taught that we are just little people. We are insignificant in the higher scheme of things. But it's a lie. Each of us quite literally holds the key to the universe in our hands if we would just look and see it. For the reality is that we are not merely spectators here, and in truth, mankind and the overall experience that we are involved in right now on this earth is the main event. Humankind is the vector, the link between the above and the below. And we are, each of us here, participating in creation at this particular time for a specific purpose. And that purpose is to create this reality, to perceive the experience and to gather knowledge. The tools that we have been provided with in order to achieve this task are our thoughts, our feelings and our emotions, while the most powerful tool of all is our free will. In our perception and interaction with this reality, this free will is the key we have been searching for. It is truly the most important thing of all. It is this free will that provides us with our freedom of choice. And it is this freedom of choice that controls the state of our consciousness. For whether we realize it or not, it is this freedom of choice that decides which energy we as individuals choose to center ourselves in. 
and it is from this chosen center that each of us perceives our individual reality. It is our individual perceptions that then, in turn, creates that which is perceived by the collective consciousness, of which we are all part. It is the choice and decisions of the collective consciousness, the free will of the people, that quite literally creates the world that we experience every day. There are now many fields of science that are also realizing a need to embrace this perspective. Indeed, many scientists are at last realizing that it is only by embracing the spiritual understanding and then applying it to science that any true answers will ever be found. For example, mainstream science is now openly declaring that consciousness is non-local to the body. And this is also extremely significant. For what this means is that what you see when you look in the mirror is not actually you. It is merely the vessel that you use as a tool to create and experience your chosen reality. For the real truth is that the world in which you live is purely illusionary. It is nothing more than a construction of your beliefs, your perceptions and your intentions. A creation of your understanding and your conditioning. And it is these things that confuse you into believing that what you perceive in the mirror is who and what you are and it controls what you think you can and cannot achieve. They also convince you that what you perceive and experience as the solid world around you is real, even though it is purely an illusion you are experiencing. What is required to gain an understanding of your true nature and of the power you hold on a personal level is to gain an understanding of energy and to be aware of what type of energy you are centered in. Everything that exists is simply energy in differing forms of perception. Everything is energy. It is this energy that makes up this reality. What you perceive around you as vacuum and empty space is the true stuff of the universe. For what you perceive as a solid world around you, the things you perceive as matter are in reality simply divisions in space. It is the space that is truly real. What arranges the substance of this space into discernible matter is consciousness. The conscious energy field around you has been called many things by many people. It has been called the matrix, the mind of God, nature, or even simply the field. It is the intangible stuff that connects all things and binds them into a single reality. It is this field that each of you is connected to and with which you interact to create and shape reality every moment of every day. This is achieved via your perceptions and through the interactions of your thoughts, your feelings and your emotions. For these things that occur within you are quite literally a language. And this language, though not spoken, is very real. The importance of understanding this language has been known since ancient times. Many societies of the past based their entire civilizations upon gaining this understanding. And it was solely for this purpose that many of their now ancient structures were created. Many of these ancient remains were not merely temples, they were places of learning. The key to comprehending such places is to understand how energy works and how different energies are affected by different types of geometry. A structure would be built according to certain sacred geometric principles in order to create certain frequencies within the individual. The building itself would then generate a specific type of energy field that would be perceived by anyone entering inside as a tangible feeling or emotion within them. The walls and ceilings of these places would then be adorned with information in the form of hieroglyphs, texts and zodiac references that to the layman would simply seem like interesting stories, 
but to the initiated would explain the energy and the feeling generated by the structure. What this type of energy truly was and how it could be understood, harnessed and spoken. Each of these structures served in essence as a book, enabling the student to understand and speak the language of feeling and emotion. This language is still used and it is still spoken by people in the modern world today. In fact, it is spoken every single moment of every single day by every human being on earth, though most are completely unaware that they are doing so. It is the language of electromagnetism spoken to the surrounding energy field via the liquid crystal oscillator that powers your body. It is the language of the heart. There are, however, certain forces in this world that have worked to ensure such information is kept out of public noise. And this is most especially true in our modern societies where the powers that be have painstakingly attempted to keep such knowledge well hidden. These forces have succeeded in trapping the collective consciousness of humankind within one small layer of a fractal and endless reality. And this has been achieved via the manipulation of mind. Methods have been employed that have succeeded in completely detaching human beings from their sense of power and reality. And this is a process that has been going on for a very long time. It has been done through the suppression of true knowledge and by using such machinations as religion, patriotism, race, wealth, class and every other form of separatism available in order to create a divided mindset among the people. Anything to make humankind feel separated from each other and from the planet they live upon. And the main tool that has been used to achieve these ends is fear. The situation we are facing in the world today has been created by design and it has become what we perceive as reality simply because most people are unaware of the true nature of reality or have any real understanding of how this world is actually run. It continues to this day due to the fact that the only information that most people receive comes from newspapers or the television. It needs to be made clear to everyone that the mainstream media will never inform people as to the real facts surrounding anything. It is simply not what the media is designed to do. The mainstream media has little or nothing to do with keeping people informed and everything to do with controlling the flow of information and shaping the thoughts, beliefs and opinions of the populace. These institutions simply present theory and propaganda as fact and promote ridicule toward anyone questioning them. It is a very cleverly constructed system, but once you have figured out how to see through the haze of propaganda, the real truths become painfully obvious. But still, many people fail to see through the haze, and so now we find the entire human race facing a most precarious situation. The first step in remedying this situation, the first step in regaining an understanding of reality and of our true connection to it, is to free ourselves from the control mechanisms of the physical world. And the way to achieve this is for each individual on this planet to stand up and to reclaim their birthright. Do you think everything happening in the world today is normal? Do you consider the path humanity is currently treading to simply be a natural progression? Do you think the war on terror is real? Open your mind and open your eyes. Notice the continuing illegal invasions. Notice the continual removal of your rights. Notice the anti-humanitarian legislation being enacted by our governments and understand that this situation simply cannot continue without the acceptance and passive compliance of the people. So stop complying with it, because the prison door is now swinging shut. The governments and police that we have employed to protect us have visibly stepped from their path. No longer do police act in the capacity of peace officers. Now they are simply hired thugs of governments that have long since ceased to act in the best interests of the people. 
and the fact that in modern times many police officers and also many soldiers are actually brainwashed enough to unquestioningly enforce any piece of corrupt legislation handed to them rather than arresting the criminals who gave the orders indicates a grave danger to the people. This is why it is so important for public awareness of the real issues facing humanity because with public awareness we can quite easily turn things around and create a peaceful and empowered society. It is also why it is so important for police to wake up to themselves and start actually doing their job of protecting the citizens rather than defending elitist corruption and undermining the security of their nation, which is what they are currently doing. Unfortunately for the people, most modern police officers have forgotten that they are people too and that the perceived power of these individuals lies in the uniform, not in the pawn that is wearing it. These police officers are removing their own rights as well and ultimately it comes down to the people to stop this occurring. One really cannot blame the puppet leaders, nor even the criminal banksters that control them, because ultimately it's all happening simply because the people are going along with it. It's all about free will. It's all about whether you choose to allow this situation to continue, or whether you choose to shake off the TV-induced apathy, spread the word, and stand up and say no. What we are experiencing in this reality is freedom of choice. So step away from the fear because it is truly time for people to understand the real power that they have. Turn your back on the TV, shake off the fear mentality and stand up and say no. Come to the realization that we are not numbers, we are not consumers, we are sovereign people and the governments are our elected servants. Understand where their position in the hierarchy actually lies. The government serves the people. The people do not serve the government. And with public awareness of the true dilemma facing humanity, we can quite peacefully and very easily rectify things. One may pause to wonder how we ever let it get this far. How do we ever let the world fall into the situation it is now in? The entire system is completely corrupt. It is corrupt in every single way. Wars are created by design. Whole nations are decimated for the sake of corporate interests. Our food is poisoned with toxins. Our water supply is filled with toxic waste under the pretext of it keeping our teeth healthy. Whole countries are brought to their knees for the sake of profit, while most people fail to even admit that there's a problem. People spend their lives in the collecting of meaningless trinkets or in self-improvement while ignoring everything that goes on around them. Believing the world is the way it's portrayed on the television, the way it looks in magazines. Many focus on the divisions among people and what they perceive to be different about others from themselves rather than on the similarities. The essence in each of us that remains at the core. The essence that connects us to each other. The essence that makes us all the same. And people wait to ascend to a higher consciousness or to be delivered into salvation by a saviour without ever having to take responsibility for themselves. And they still fail to see that there's a problem. People scoff at the idea that fluoride is a neurotoxin and yet the world is being strip mined and depopulated around them. Government corruption is rife the whole system is rotten to the core and still no one sees it as a problem. And now, with the introduction of genetically modified food and seed patenting, we are seeing a situation arise which has the potential to destroy the entire food chain on this planet. And all of this is occurring simply because we the people are allowing it to happen. One may pause to ask, exactly in whose interests is it to destroy the entire food chain. Why is our earth being strip mined around us? And why is such a massive amount of depopulation occurring? One may even pause the question, who is really in charge here? There are, of course, those who do not want us to speak. For the first time in human history, 
for the first time in all of human history, almost all of mankind is politically awake. And these new and old major powers face still yet another novel reality, in some respects unprecedented. And it is that while the lethality, the lethality of their power is greater than ever, their capacity to impose control over the politically awakened masses of the world is at a historical low. I once put it rather pungently, and I was flattered that the British Foreign Secretary repeated this as follows. Namely, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people, literally. It was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. It is easier to kill than to control. Humanity is indeed facing challenging times. There is absolutely no denying the fact of this. It is all around us. Wars. Terrorism. Famine. Disease. Corruption. Homelessness. The end of the central banking pyramid scheme currently manifesting itself as the global financial crisis. Climate change the media tries to teach us is man-made, despite a wealth of scientific evidence to the contrary. And there are many other things besides. Even in this film, I've mentioned some of the challenges we are facing from the very governments and police forces we have employed to protect us. And who, through the use of a controlled media, have slowly worked to convince people that they are our rulers, when they are in fact our servants. Yet despite all the problems we face, any investigation reveals that all of these issues have a common cause. And that this cause can very easily be addressed. All that is needed to do so is public awareness of the real situation humanity is facing. In fact, when one puts away the fear, stands back and looks deep enough, it can be seen that all of these challenges actually present mankind with the most wonderful opportunity. Perhaps the greatest we have ever had offered to us. Indeed, such challenges as those we currently face may even be seen as something of a blessing. For were it not for the challenges, the opportunity we now have would never have presented itself to us and it truly is being handed to us on a silver platter. What we are being provided with is an opportunity to embrace the power we all have. The choice to step away from the fear and to unite the human family. An opportunity for the human race to understand the connection we have to each other and to embrace a unity of consciousness. Certainly, it is extremely important that we free ourselves from the corporate shackles of this society. It is important that the social and political issues, the fake wars of contrivance, the loss of rights, and the attitude of our corrupt governments and police forces be dealt with. But what is even more important is that they be dealt with 
conduct in the right way. That way is not through violence and revolution. It is not through a center of anger and hatred. The powers that be want violent revolution. They want the polarized energy such conflagrations produce. But this must not be done. For the most effective way to deal with it all is through a peaceful rebellion of non-compliance to the system and through adherence to the one law. To connect to the heart and to do the right thing. Many people are waking up to this and the more people who wake up, the more the field is charged with their energy. And so the field changes and continues to awaken more in turn as they draw new energy into themselves. And so it continues exponentially. The powers that be know this. They know the field is changing. They know that we have this opportunity to move into heart energy. They can sense how precarious their hold over this world now is and how easily this control could slip from their grasp. This is the main reason for the current global instability and political tension, the recombinant H5N1 swine flu virus and accompanying vaccination program in a blatant last ditch attempt at depopulation. And there is a reason for all of these things to have been thrust upon us at the very same time. That reason is to manipulate consciousness through the use of polarized energy by creating an atmosphere of tension, of distrust, of anger and of fear. The earth is reaching the end of a very long cycle. The frequency of the planet is rising and so with it the frequency of all upon this earth. The harmonic frequency of the planet, known in scientific circles as the human cavity resonance, rises periodically in the predictable steps outlined in the Fibonacci sequence of numbers. The last time this occurred was close to 13,000 years ago and it is now occurring again. The current rise in frequency began in 1986 of our calendar and this represents a very significant and extremely important time both for this planet and also for all life that lives upon it. Evolution is a real process, but it does not happen as it is portrayed in the Darwinian model. For species do not simply turn into other species as Darwin theorized. True evolution is the evolution of consciousness. Such evolution is only a gradual process while knowledge is being acquired during each cycle. But the evolutionary changes each cycle eventually produces come as the cavity resonance rises and time speeds up at the end of each cycle. In such times, evolution comes very quickly. We are currently living in just such a time. The earth is a conscious living being with complete awareness of itself. It is evolving and the human race is evolving along with it. And it is not just localized to this earth or to this solar system or even to this galaxy. It is universal because it is the energy all is made from. It is consciousness itself that is evolving. Consciousness is on the verge of creating an entirely new reality. And humankind is the vector, the gateway between the above and the below. 
Humankind is the mind of God itself, and the choice of what the outcome of these changes will be lies with each of us. It lies within me, and it lies within you. It is a question of energy, a game of free will, a matter of choice between love and fear. Long ago there were certain forces that gained control of this earth, and they have worked very hard in order to never relinquish this control. These forces operate through the ruling bloodlines and monetary system, and they rule the world today via the use of their favourite method, the manipulation of energy through the unbridled and relentless propagation of fear. These ruling factions know all about the great cycles this planet is subject to. They know all about sacred geometry and energy fields. They know that this consciousness is about to evolve and they are attempting to control that evolution. They know that all of humanity is actually a single consciousness and they know that if they can create as much fear in the world as possible then that is the reality that will be created through this change. This is why the notion that such things like the end of the Mayan calendar signify doomsday are so heavily promoted by the media and Hollywood. The mass media and Hollywood are the tools used by the elite to influence and control the minds and the consciousness of the people. Hollywood weaves its spell by mixing truth with lies to create a distorted vision of reality and fearful visions of the future. Hollywood has always been used to do this, to influence the beliefs of the people. In fact, Hollywood has been used for this very same purpose for a very long time. Something you may not know is that in the long forgotten past, such control over human consciousness was the domain of the Druids. This sect would influence the people through ritual and the manipulation of energy fields. This was carried out by means of ceremonies that would be called magic spells and ridiculed by a modern society. The use of magic wands crafted from a particular wood that was believed to contain certain spiritual properties always figured heavily in these druidic rituals. The wood these wands were fashioned from invariably came from the holly tree. Throughout man's history, wherever mass mind control has been utilized, one will always find references to Hollywood. Changes are indeed coming to this earth. There is no way to avoid these changes. They are inevitable. Indeed, they are on our very doorstep. But these changes are nothing to fear. They are to be welcomed as a new beginning. However violent and painful they may at first appear to be. Such violence and pain is not dissimilar to the pain experienced in childbirth, for such is always the way new life appears. It is easy to promote a state of apprehension towards the coming changes. It is easy to exploit people's fear of the unknown, especially if such changes may appear at first as violent upheavals and Hollywood does its job very well. But it is important not to view things from a fearful perspective, because the way to deal with these changes is to remain centered in your heart. Those who are centered in heart and who maintain a strong connection with the heart of this earth will easily survive what is coming to experience a new life in a very new, and very different world.
The universe in which we live has indeed been created by a conscious and intelligent mind. And the basis of everything within creation is that of geometry and mathematics. Everything follows the path of sacred geometry. And there is no exception to this rule anywhere within creation. It is in the orbital statistics of our solar system. It exists within plant life and nature. It even exists throughout your body. It is quite literally everywhere throughout all creation. The evolution that is about to occur is long awaited and long expected as it follows the predictable mathematical steps outlined in the Fibonacci sequence as does all of nature. The method used in the creation of this number sequence also holds important clues for humankind as to how these changes must be dealt with. For in the Fibonacci sequence it is by combining the present with the past that the future presents itself. This is why it is so important for modern man to now embrace the old ways and to learn the knowledge of their ancestors. This information is well known in shamanic traditions from all cultures on all continents. For those who do not learn the old ways, the future will be strange and unpredictable. In this film, I have attempted to explain to you the real structure of this reality, the nature of energy, and of the light and sound that make up this entire universe, and every one and everything contained within it. I have attempted to show you that this understanding is supported both by ancient traditions and also by modern science. I will say to you again now that all that actually exists within this or any other reality is pure conscious energy. That is truly all there is. And the stuff that this energy is made from is pure, unconditional love. I bring this message to you now because it is important that you receive it. The earth and all that live upon it are about to undergo some very significant changes. But these changes are nothing to be feared. For once you have gained a clear understanding of what this reality truly is, once you have gained knowledge of how the true stuff of the universe actually works, once you have realized your connection to all people and to all things, once you have moved into the heart, then follow the path of the one universal law. Then what is there to fear? What is there to hate? What is there to judge? Understand that the life we are experiencing within this reality is a game of free will being played out by a single consciousness of which we are all merely frequencies. Tune into that space behind your eyes. Realize that to deal with the situation we are faced with in the world today, and to deal with the coming changes, all you really need do is move into your heart. To realize that all that actually exists within this reality is energy consisting of nothing more than pure, unconditional love. Embrace it. Become it for it is what you are made of. I love you all. In Lakesh.